Well, good morning, guys. Today is the start of a whole new project. And as you guys may know, I'm up in the pine forest, which is up on the upper side of this property. And the story on this pine forest is it was planted about 40 years ago through a government incentive program to you know reclaim sort of farmland to make it productive forest. Well, previous property owner failed to do is thin this forest. So after about four or five, even six years, even 10 years into the first planting, you're supposed to go in and thin the forest. Well, this forest was planted and forgotten. It was never managed. Now, a lot of people, especially in the comments I read, well, you guys are killing trees. You guys are cutting trees. Well, this forest is essentially dead. It, it, it is, it's, there's a lot of trees that are standing, but there are a lot of trees that need to be removed because it's not being productive anymore. It doesn't have enough light to the forest floor. As you can see, we are right in the middle of, uh, right in the middle of the day and uh, it's not very bright in here. The only reason it is bright is because there's a little bit of snow on the ground. Otherwise it's dark in here. So as you can see, there is very mature white pine trees, but there is also a whole lot of dead standing. Now we took a lot of trees out when we did our log cabin. Uh, like, you know, this one here, that one's, that one's hung up and really big dead tree. Dead tree over there. Dead tree, dead tree, dead tree. Really big dead tree, dead tree. Here's dead standing, the bark's coming off. But that's the sort of stuff I'm gonna be dealing with today is the stuff that's dead. It's kind of like a multi-year project it, it, and it's to slowly take out anything that's dead standing. Like I could go out and clear out all the trees, but I figure I might as well start with the dead ones. So if anybody out there that's saying you're killing trees, I am not killing trees, these trees are dead. They're just sitting there. They're just, they're, they're waiting for a disaster actually. So many, you know, a wayward cigarette gets flicked into the bush and then next thing you know, the whole forest is on fire because there is so much standing dead fuel. Sort of like we pile the branches here, pile the branches here and, and then uh, and then deal with them on a rainy day or even in the dead of winter. Uh, you can just kind of burn them or you can chip them or you can just let them rot. It is habitat for the forest creatures, but nothing comes in here because there's no real place to hide. There's no, there's no features. Standing pine tree. Crazy, actually. It's kind of, it, it really, it looks cool, but it's not great for the ecosystem. It's called what you call a monoculture and uh, it's not great. So that's the plan. It's kind of a lost art, but it's a lost art of managing forests. You got to kind of, it's, it's a lot of work as opposed to using, you know, heavy equipment in here and destroying the forest. I like to kind of like pick away at it and uh, use what I'm going to take down. So the plan, the plan with the stuff we are going to remove is I'm thinking of a roundhouse, right? That'd be kind of cool. A uh, kind of like a, a, a house made of sticks that looks kind of like an igloo, but it's made completely out of wood. And I've got a special roof for that, but it's going to be essentially round. It'd be a circle house. That'd be kind of cool, right? I think Don, this is, this is our V-log. Sorry? Our V-log. Oh, okay. It's our video log with your log. My two log. My two log. You don't let me stop it. I'm just in the way. Back 40 years ago, they used to plant trees in rows and it was a monoculture. They'd only put one specific species of tree in the forest and they, they'd plant it kind of like crops and uh, their goal was to manage these forests. Well, it turns out people don't really like managing forests. They find either they, they, they don't want to cut them down because they feel that they're cutting trees down. Well, when a planted forest was planted, its ultimate design was to have every other tree removed at a certain point and every other row removed at a certain point for the, in order for the entire species to grow. And then at some point it's supposed to be completely harvested, like as in cut every single tree down and then start it again. That unfortunately hasn't really panned out in this situation. This forest in particular was planted about 40 years ago and then forgotten. It was never managed. Every tree is still standing the way it was when it was planted. Well, they're a little taller. My goal with this forest is to rehabilitate it back to a productive forest, meaning taking trees out. I'm starting with the dead ones and then I'm going to move on to the live ones because I want more light to the forest floor. This guy, this is a pretty easy one. You can determine whether or not it's dead. It's, it's pretty much dry. The base of most pine trees, white pine trees are dead. Usually you go through the forest and you would break them off in early stage with either a baseball bat or an ax. This one you can kind of tell because it's there. That you can tell that one was dead. You can just knock it over with your shoulder. But that's the plan with this forest. So, anyways, and I think what better use to use the forest than actually building something cool with the product? You got three logs, man. Yeah, 
they're pretty small. <laughs> the load limit there. Load limit, log limit. There you go. Okay, force too many. Force too many? That was the. Force too many. All right, Don. Don and I have been trying to figure out the uh, circumference of a circle, and uh, we had uh, we have a 12 foot diameter circle. What's that? Pi r squared. What do we think? 5.5. What? 35 feet. I mean, 35 feet worth of wall. There's going to be a door in there too, so maybe not that many. We got a big, quite, quite a big pile. We've been working at it pretty much all all morning. You can kind of see our pile. Like there it is. There. Hopefully. We have enough. It sure is cold out today. It's got that constant wind, wind chill, and especially my right hand. My left hand has a glove on, but my right hand is frozen. But Kevin, how could you tell the tree is dead? Well, there's a couple of signs. Primarily, the bark has come off. Like, it's like no bark. And then you see a live tree, it's got bark. You can also look up. A lot of the times there's no top on them. This one, alive, it's got a top. Can you see the top? Anyways, that's how you tell if a tree is dead or not. They're kind of dangerous and they're kind of not dangerous. They're so dry, they don't really break. The ones that are really, really dangerous, you just kind of give them a push, you stand to the side and see if the top snaps off of. That's uh, not the ideal situation. But this situation is comes down to one piece. Cut a tree down, it tends to want to stand straight up because it's, it's never been thinned and everything's so close, so. But they are pretty light, so that's, uh, that's a plus. Well, that's not a bad day's work. That's about uh, 65 dead trees. And it looks like we did nothing, Don. Doesn't it? Does it look like we did anything? Well, other than the piles of brush. And it's true. It does look a little... And the foot tra or the traps. That's right. They got little trails. We got little <laughs> foot trails where we've kind of screwed through the bottom of the forest. We gotta get the logs out. That's about 65, 65 dead standing trees, I guess. Some of them we got two out of the mount, so we got about 60 trees or so. Down, dead, dead standing trees. These are, these aren't live trees. You wouldn't be able to carry them like we are carrying them if they were alive, because they'd be really heavy. Although this is the right time to harvest trees. Actually, late January is the right time to harvest live trees. Apparently the second, is it the full moon or something like that? You're supposed to girdle them and then let them die standing and that's the old the old way to harvest trees in order to build a cabin. But hey, you know what? Dead standing is good for me. There's just so many everywhere you look. <sighs> it's an ongoing project, but we'll wait, wait for first light tomorrow. We'll carry on. All right, next day we got a plan. We got a plan for our roof. This is the old 12 foot diameter satellite dish. It's one of those old school satellite dishes you might've used when you were a kid and you were like, trying to scan from different satellites from satellites and you'd see a show and you'd like pause it and you'd be like i want to see that and then you'd back it up a little bit and then you would get the channel you'd usually get uh you'd get picture but you wouldn't get sound if you know what i mean this is the abomination that was a satellite tv when i was a kid because you had to put in like a code that was like you know 50 digits long and then you had to program it with your remote and it was uh they were tough times there, kids. We had to uh, really, really work at watching our TV. We didn't have uh, YouTube brought right to your, uh, right to your computer screen, clickety-click, get to decide. And there was no comment section, which is uh, probably nice for the creators of those channels. Do you ever have one of these old school satellite dishes when you were a kid? No, we just had the old antenna. Antenna. All right, there you go. I... It didn't even have a rotor on it. Really? No. Hmm. You got what you got. You went out there and your dad would say, go get channel four, and he'd reposition the, the rabbit ears to get, no? No, no, no we didn't even have that. Like oh. we couldn't. Well, you could manually move them. Well, if you went up on the roof. Oh, okay. My dad had them on the thing and he knew exactly where to put them um, to get every specific channel clearest. Yeah. And, and that was, yeah. I think Actually, was... we, were, we were quite lucky because we did get quite a few channels. Look at, it's like one of those, it's one of those fancy hats. Like one of those, I don't know, brimless, round, is it? Kinda, sorta. So this is, that's the plan, is to suspend the roof about here, Don. What do you think? Oh, it's, good. it's not extra heavy. It gets, it gets stuck on my head. Ah. Okay. Isn't that the easiest roof you've ever made, Don? That's one of them anyways. Isn't that great? Look at that thing, that thing's, a, that thing's amazing. 
then we're going to set it down on the ground and that's going to give us our footprint and then we're going to dig a trench and that's what's going to hold our walls so that's the uh that's the plan is that like a plan don All right, now we got our nice little trench dug. Now people are probably saying, why didn't you use your little backhoe to dig a trench? Well, I kind of like, I like a nice tight hole for my posts because otherwise they're wiggly. So that's why we dug a little trench. It didn't take that long, just over a half an hour, 40 minutes or so. Don likes digging. I wouldn't want to take that away from him. Right, Don? That's right. That's right. I don't like digging a hole. Yeah. So uh, now our plan is to take our posts and set them in our trench kind of uh, one after the other after the other and hopefully they kind of backfill as we go pack them in and that'll give us a nice uh, solid wall and then once we're done that we're gonna end up uh, cutting the uh, top of it flush but we'll get to that a little bit later first we gotta see if this will actually work because it's all kind of experimental in order to set our posts in the ground we first started with one post and packed dirt around it and then subsequently added more posts packing the dirt around them as we went. We found it quite difficult to actually set more than one at a time. So Don was picking up the posts, bringing them to me, and I would pack the dirt around the posts in order for them to stand up. And then we were further, once everything stood up, we're going to level them. Bean, what do you think? What do you think, Bean? quite the outpost starting to form we've got our posts in the ground we've got them somewhat uh, plumbed uh, we just kind of loosely installed them here you can tell already that sound has changed when you're in here which is kind of cool it's starting to close itself in um, so what our plan now is to actually take a laser level and then shoot it around and then level off all the posts and I'm probably add a little bit of an angle at the top and then plop our our lid on our dish which is our roof and then We'll have it closed in. I've got some plans. I haven't quite firmed up on my plans on the inside sheeting because there is going to be, as you can see, there is, there's some cracks in the, uh, there's some cracks in the walls. So I think I got some, uh, some primitive insulation, either pine needles or sawdust. I think I'm going to crack in there, but I want to do some either interior sheeting. Either I'm going to go strips of wood, really thin, thin wood, and then sheet the entire thing. Or I have an, an old pool, an above ground pool, which has got some, uh, like it's like very thin metal. And uh, I don't know if I have enough linear footage of it, but that would be kind of cool to just kind of skirt the inside of it. And then I could pack the outside of it kind of between the, uh, the logs and the exterior, which would be kind of cool. I haven't quite figured that out yet in the noggin. Anyways, moving right along, we're going to, we're going to end up setting the laser up and then cutting these things off. What do you think? We're, we, Don and I have been playing ring around the rosy pretty much all day. Where, where did Don go? There's Don. What do you think? What do you think of the laser idea? Cut the posts off. It's a great idea. And give it work. Maybe we level. We can level the floor too. Hmm? Better than measuring. Better than measuring. I don't even think you need a round level. We're, we'll add some technology. We'll add some modern, a modern spin on creating bunkers in the forest. Right about that height, which is tall enough. I don't know. Do you want to go taller? What do you think? Well, might as well go. Might as well take good, Yeah, as tall as we can, right? Laser, laser. Let's shoot a laser around there. Uh, actually, laser is it was a K Wheats or something like that, which is uh, it's been serving to be actually quite cool. They sent me that thing. That that far off our max. Uh, yeah, because we've got six inches on that one. Yeah, like this one here is the, probably the lowest one over there. So I think we can. We need a block to make our laser go a little taller. Ran around, run around with the chainsaw to cut that thing out. <laughs> Well, that worked out pretty good. I give you the same advice as I give my toddler is uh, when you're doing that, keep your mouth closed because it's uh, much like swimming. You, you kind of eat a lot of sawdust, but it's perfectly level. Cool. Now we just got to put the roof on and then we're going to wiggle them out as we see fit in order to fit the roof on. Should work, right?
like can you just kind of go one by one yeah and, then you kinda, and go out and well, just go like, like these that, ones right? are these ones are crazy not plumb right like yeah. these ones here have to yeah have to come way out yeah so like if i go up there yeah and then these these ones should if these ones are straight up and down we've got the bottom it can't move and what we're doing is we're leveling the part, we're plumbing the post up and down, we're pulling them out to the edge of the satellite dish. And then I got a uh, steel roofing screw. This is a Vic West roofing screw. And uh, I'm just putting it right through the square tubing. And holding each individual post in place all the way around. And that's gonna give us a pretty solid structure once everything's attached together. You can kind of see how we can move it. We kind of split the difference between the spacing. Just like. This is pretty cool. We got the roof all done. Well, we got to still put the waterproofing on top, but we've got the structure of the roof done and uh, we've got all our posts in. As you can see, there's a lot of them. Can you guys guess how many there is? I'll give you a quick, uh, a quick view of how many posts there are. There's, uh, I know how many there are. I'll put it, uh, I'll let you know next video. So you guys, can, you guys can guess how many, how many posts there are. So if you're, put your guess down in the comments below. It, uh, there's quite a few of them. Anyways, that's really cool. Look at that. That's neat. So I've got a rubber, not a rubber, it's more like a plastic or a tarp that's going to go in the roof. And then we're going to uh, add some more organic material to the top of it to kind of give it that uh, the old bunker look. Anyway, that's pretty neat. So this tree here is a fair sized tree. It doesn't really show up that well on camera, but it is about 16 inches in diameter. Like they, they measure them at DBH, which is a diameter breast height, which is about that high. So that thing's about a 50 or 16 inch tree. So as you guys have a look around this area, this is near the edge or the backside of the planted pine forest. This is where I started probably about five years ago, clearing out dead trees. And as you can see, they're much more spaced out. It just feels healthier. It doesn't, like there's no branches hitting me in the head. And uh, you can kind of tell that the trees, I don't know, I feel, I feel like they're doing better i don't know they don't talk to me again i don't know if you can tell this is about a foot and a half in diameter and it's about 50 feet tall so that's the kind of size of trees that you would want to kind of get the most yield for lumber and whatnot so that guy there given them room to grow a white pine tree will last a really long time like close to 100 years they'll grow but not necessarily in a planted forest about 40 years and they're done again this one is at the edge and it's huge so it's got all the nutrients, it's got the light, it's got ground nutrients and whatnot. Again, near the edge of the property, this is a cherry tree. It kind of looks like a pine tree, but it is a cherry. It's a uh, black cherry, black cherry tree, and that's kind of the high value timbers. And so that's the kind of stuff I would want to be reintroducing to my forest, just as the pine trees slowly die. Because there's, the problem is, is again, the ground cover is so thick, nothing has the ability to root and grow. Hey, look, Chris is here. I am. What are you doing here? I'm barely here. You're barely here? Why are you here for? Uh, I'm, I'm picking up footage to edit the video. <laughs> to be to be perfectly honest. That is very honest of you. <laughs> That's what Chris does. At the end of the, every video, Chris uh, comes and he collects my footage. Moral support. Inspiration. Encouragement. Yeah. Encouragement. And then... Uh, so you're it's doing... Like we're, we're breaking the third wall now. I oh, yeah, I don't, supposed to, I don't think they want to... We, we want to talk about forests. Well, we're talking about the forest. The for I think the forest is garbage. There's lots of trees. There's too many trees, <laughs> which it's the diversity really that comes, you know, in order. And, and I find the, the, the best way to, to deal with a project is to make an activity around it. So I like building. Okay. So I'm going to take there's some benefits. To it. I'm taking, there is some, some benefits. There's some use to the trees. I love this forest. I looked at this property five years ago. I was like, this thing is crazy. And primarily because I like to keep busy. So it's kind of like a, it keeps me busy. And I anticipate this being a lifelong project. <laughs> well, sure. it, 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 it is, really. Yeah, there's there's actually a really cool documentary on, I think it's on the BBC called uh, Tales from the Wild Wood. And it's a documentary of a dude. And he tried to manage a wild forest in the UK. And he spent a year doing it. And he managed to do one acre. No, he didn't do one acre. He tried to do one acre. And he, he was successful. He, did, he had pigs and stuff. And it was actually pretty cool. Um, but he... Yeah, it's a lot of work. So I, I have used this forest in like a, a number of my videos, and the biggest comment I get is like, "What is that? Why are all the trees in a row? 
who did that? Where are you? Is I am in a forest that was engineered by a man. Well, <laughs> he's like, I have an idea, guys. Let's plant uh, 300 trees exactly the same all in a row and leave it for 40 years. This is what you get. But man does really bad things when it touches nature. So if it just they just left it to its own devices, it would be a very diverse, very mixed forest, very uh, habitable to other animals, not just like, okay, it's, we got trees, we're done. So can we just say, okay, boomer? Because the boomers did this, the baby oh, boomers. Yeah, they, the baby they, boomers, they this had, was their plan. They, they just wanted to get like, let's, let's just reforest this area as fast as possible. And so they like picked 200 of the same trees and they're just like, let's go. 200? I don't know how many are in like there. There's a thousand. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Keep going. I think there's probably like four thousand. There's probably five thousand trees. I don't know. Easily. There's that many. I, I we're doing like a little. You got to put the comments in, in below to determine how many trees we actually use to build our little our, our muffin fort. We coined it muffin fort. My buddy. I sent him a picture yesterday, and he said, uh, "That's uh, it's the muffin fort." I'm like, that's pretty accurate. Well, while we're talking, so we need some input because we're debating right now on how to get the cracks filled. And so Kevin has a, a plastic idea. I'm like, plastic? It's but, metal. Metal. Okay, so like a metal interior. But I'm like, I don't know. I think you should go earthy with this. So you guys leave down below comments on how you should fill the cracks in. Because obviously it's, you know, it's a bit of a shelter here. So one thought Kevin had was to put um, some of the pine yield dirt in it. I don't know. If, if you go to it. the understory, Don was, Don was into the understory. You got to go to the lower, the lower bits, the lower bits. Like, is that going to stay in there? Well, you got to go to the lower bits. The lower bits is more, I think it'll stay. You pack it in there. But the lower bits is more packy. This stuff is like fresh tinder. I don't know if we want to make our tinder fire here. I don't know, that, that, that's packed in there. But the other stuff is moister and more packy. It's got more dirt and organic material. So I think it might stack. I but anyways. Horse manure. Hor yeah, I want to stand in a McMuffin fort. It'll full dry out. It'll dry out. <laughs> it'll dry out and then it'll turn into cement. Got any horses? Oh, sure. Get some horses. We should get some horses. Sure, you can get some horses. All right, let's uh, get our fire going because we're going to have a, uh, we're having an afternoon, the afternoon delight. I think that's something different. We're having afternoon delicious. Collect our roofing material, which uh, is uh, one of those old school bubble buildings. We're going to separate it because that's what I want to do, make the roof waterproof, but also living. So that's the plan. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. What's really cool about NordVPN is you can change your virtual location simply by clicking a button. Maybe your streaming service isn't available in your country. Simply change it by clicking on the country you desire. You can access your content from anywhere. It's no longer limited by geographical location. Another feature about using NordVPN is no more throttling. NordVPN encrypts all your data so it doesn't slow down your streaming services. Maybe you're into gaming and the game you want isn't available in your country. Simply log on to NordVPN, change your location virtually, and you can download the game no problem. With more than 5,200 servers in 60 different countries, it gives you the ability to log in your server near you, or if you need to, log in to a faraway server to download the content you want. Another great feature of having a VPN is you gain access to deals and services not necessarily offered in your geographical location. Unblock your favorite games and geo-restricted servers. You're not limited to where you live anymore. For your holiday season special, go to NordVPN slash Modern Self Reliance and get yourself a two-year plan for 73 percent off and you get one month free thanks to nordvpn for sponsoring my channel it's sponsors like nordvpn that keep these channels going here's the uh under layer of the pine needles so like like i said this forest has been here for 40 years so if you go down deep enough you've kind of got pine needles that are there you can pack them almost into a ball they kind of stay that way. I think they're slightly, they're slightly digested or decomposed. So that, I was thinking maybe we could stuff in between the cracks, which it kind of goes in if you don't get chunks of ice, but you just stuck it in, just you pack it in from both sides. And as long as you get rid of all of the kind of surface area, I don't believe it'll be a fire hazard in the future. I don't know. You guys decide whether or not I should line it with. Well, I got some tin, which is an old, uh, I don't know, it was, and we figured we, there's like 60 linear feet of uh, metal cladding. It was used to an old above ground pool. So my plan was to skirt the inside of it and maybe pack it behind it. But uh, I don't know if it would lose the aesthetic on the inside. It would just look like a metal box again. We'd look like a culvert again, which I don't know if I want to go that way. You guys decide. Just a big shout out to High C rubber boots. I don't know if they're rubber or if they're neoprene. They're really comfy. 
uh, rubber boots. I've been wearing them for the last couple of days and my feet are actually toasty and warm. Uh, so they're actually, they actually breathe a little bit, which is really cool. I got the little buckle that uh, allows you to kind of tighten around the calf. But yeah, great little rubber boot. I've had troubles with the finding winter boots in the past. I've uh, tried a couple of different companies and these ones seem to be working really well. So I'll keep you guys updated. If they fall apart, I'll let you know. But I think they're so far so good. If you guys are interested in picking yourself up a pair, the link will be in the description below. Oh, it's just it's heavy. heavy. Why is it so heavy? So I ended up picking up this tarp from uh, when they decommissioned those bubble buildings. I guess they have a lifespan on those. Uh, so there's those big round white buildings that they're pressurized. They sometimes have sports fields in them or big factories. So I ended up picking them up. They uh, they actually have them outside their factory where, you know, good, free to good home or free to bad home. They just wanted to get rid of them. They just want to keep them out of the landfill. So uh, I'm able to actually pick these guys up. They don't cost anything and uh, they're really durable for the, uh, the reasons why I want to use them for. So I use them for covering wood piles and uh, firewood and covering building material and stuff like that. You could also, you could probably use them for like a slip and slide or whatever, right? This is, these things are awesome. So my plan with this tarp is to ultimately use it for the uh, the roof of the structure because it is it is waterproof, it is a roofing material and it's, uh, it's free, which is uh, right up my alley. So there's an underlayer, which is this stuff, which is kind of translucent. It's significantly lighter than the other layer. So my plan is to actually separate the inner layer, which is also translucent and lighter from the outer layer, which is really crazy heavy and it's really hard to manage. So that's my plan to use an X-Acto knife and I'm just gonna cut it all out and then it gives a nice big piece for our roof structure. And I think this stuff will last forever. I don't wanna cut the other thing. We have a fire, but it's slightly too big to cook on. So what I'm gonna do is actually take my shovel and uh, spread it out a little bit and then rake my coals back underneath my mm, grill so I can uh, get my snack started. I've got afternoon coffee I'm gonna make. I've got a special treat actually I wanna try. I'm looking for a Christmas present for those hard to buy people, that mm, grill, uh, the link will be in the description below. It's really cool for backyard uh, camping and, and cooking on a fire. It's, uh, we've been using it for quite some time. It's, uh, it's, withstand, it's withstood the test of time. One of the coolest things about this grill is that you can adjust the height based on what you're cooking. So if you're boiling water and you want lots of heat, you lower it right down. And if you're cooking something, I don't know, like flan or something like that, you want it up higher and more precise, less heat, you just go up higher. Versatile for outdoor cooking. I can't think of a better thing to do on a dark, dreary, cold afternoon than frying up the old bacon. This is my the afternoon snack. I don't know if Dawn's tried the uh, the actual bacon that we had. We had a pig and we made some bacon. So I don't know if Dawn's actually tried it yet. So we're gonna make him some uh, bacon, bacon and coffee. I, I can't think of a better afternoon snack than that. Oh, and I'm also gonna make a uh, a bacon s'more. If you've ever seen a bacon s'more, like chocolate cookie covered with bacon. Our bacon will be in the inside, like a little tiny chocolate sandwich. Bacon, salty, mmm. I think it's gonna be delicious. Anyway, cook up some bacon. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be delicious. Snow, the snow started on cue. Yeah, we gotta fry. Fry and bacon. Ooh, it 
it's hot. I'm gonna leave it there for <laughs> a few minutes. Mmm, <laughs> bacon. That's excellent. Cooked to perfection. Nice and crisp. Rocket fuel French press. We're gonna get our coffee grounds in the water and we're gonna let our shit there for a little bit because we're gonna really impart our coffee grounds into our water because that's gonna keep us going. Good stuff. All right, so we got our chocolate covered cookie. We're gonna take our bacon, we're gonna stick it on top. Then we're gonna stick our another chocolate covered cookie underneath or on top of it, and then we're gonna melt it. We're gonna stick it back in the pan. And let it heat up, and the bottom cookie's gonna absorb all that bacon grease. You go, on a shtick, here you go. There, we'll let we'll, it, oops, we'll, we'll let it cool. So those chocolate covered cookies are called Leclerc, so they got a special place in my heart. Well, it's good. It's, it's too hot. It's good. Oh, that's good coffee. Anything anything cooked over a fire is just better. I think that coffee done. Excellent. Already rejuvenated. We're gonna just hover over that building. Yeah. Really? We're not gonna use any ladders. We're just gonna actually just hover over the building <laughs> to put the uh wait until you get that chocolate thing. It's it's actually it looks like it's almost melted. It's almost melted. We're almost ready for our, our schmore bacon chocolate cookie. It's gonna be delicious. See that? See, can you see that? I had a little bit of chocolate on it. That's good. <laughs> Look at that. Can you see inside that? Here, uh, go camera, go. There. You can see the bacon with the chocolate. It's, it, what is, how is it? It overpowers the bacon. Does it? Oh, that's maybe one cookie then. I think the gingerbread overpowers the bacon. I've got a sweet tooth. I, I also like sugar in my coffee. Don's like, eh, you're like just a cream. You don't mm -hmm. even put sugar in your coffee. That's mm -hmm. probably why. I forced him to have one. I was like, you gotta expand your horizons, Don. Gotta try. That thing's delicious. It's uh, salty, sweet. You guys gotta try it. Well, guys, that turned out pretty good. I got the roof all in, I got it screwed in in place, and uh, I managed to tuck it in. So it, uh, so I got very few wrinkles. Like It's kind of like doing upholstery. You just kind of tuck, tuck and bunch and curl. So I think this will shed water really nicely as it, as it sits right there. And then I've got it tucked in on the sides there with uh, the rubber washer so it won't actually weep itself in. So I'm really impressed with that. I think it's gonna work out really well. And it doubles that it's actually slightly transparent. So it's gonna let a lot of light in during the day, which is kind of cool. So my plan on this tarp is to actually fold it underneath itself and then keep it about, about six inches from the actual edge of the roof. It kind of gives me a drip edge, so stuff will sheet off the roof and then drip a little bit away from my wall. So it goes like this, roughly six inches or so. And when you double up the material, it has less likely the wind to catch it and tear it. I'm not really worried about this stuff tearing. This stuff is very strong. So. Repeat that a couple hundred times, my roof is on. Take a look at that, that looks amazing. It's got like a giant, giant skylight in here. That's cool. It's gonna be nice and bright when the sun ever comes out. That's, uh, it already feels more homey in here with a lid on it. You can kind of, you can tell that the, the, you can tell you're sheltered. You could probably stay in here right now other than the fact it's kind of got some holes and we gotta deal with the cracks in our walls. But otherwise it's, it's, it's shaping up to be a really cool shelter. I like it. I like, I like round. Can't you tell? What do you think, Don? What do you think of that? Looks wonderful. Doesn't look cool? It certainly does. It's got that, it's got kind of like with, that. With that mesh, it's got a, almost a honeycomb 
feel to it. You feel like a bee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the it's got that observation sort of uh, feel to it, like if you put a telescope in here and had the roof retract or something. Yeah, planetarium. The planetarium, that's the word I was looking for. Looks like a planetarium. One of the original plans with the roof was to try to make it either a living roof was I was going to put either pine needles or either saw it on the top, but I don't think it's going to lend itself that quite the way it is because it is a very slick roof. Everything's going to shed off of it. So I might just make it like a translucent roof and then I don't need as much lighting during the day, which, because it is pretty dark. I've got some big plans with the door and the, my windows I got to cut in still, but I think it's shaping up really cool. It is a very, very organic sort of shape, nice and round. It is gonna, it's gonna shed all the snow, I think. I don't think anything's gonna stay on that roof. Can you guys make that fire any bigger? I'm trying to. Oh, yeah. The thing's like four and a half feet tall. All right, guys, let's go for a little tour. Let's check out the inside. So as you guys can see, we've got a little bit of work to do for the next time. We've got our roof on, but we still need to figure out what we're gonna do for our walls. And then we need some sort of uh, heating source. I got a, a fireplace actually lined up for that. And uh, we need a floor, obviously, because we're not, we don't want a dirt floor and we need some accommodations. We need a bed, we need chairs. Yeah, we need to make this thing a proper cabin. So ultimately this thing is going to either be a, uh, a little cabin, sort of shelter. Uh, my brother's already earmarked it to uh, take care of the coyote issue that I've uh, been threatening the chickens. You guys can leave your comments down below to, to make, maybe make some suggestions on uh, what you'd like to see in here, which, you know, we've got uh, cladding, cladding issues, which again is either going to be stuffed with pine needles or we got some metal stuff that may be that or even cladding with wood. So. Anyways, if you guys want to leave your comments, your suggestions down below, that would be great. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, stay warm. Join me on the next one.